we're back with John William Templeton, who can tell us all about our own Freedom Trail right here in San Francisco. Did you know that Maya Angelou was the first African-American woman to operate a cable car in the city and county of San Francisco? Here to tell us more about what we might learn on the Freedom Trail, please welcome John William Templeton. I had no idea. I did not know that Maya Angelou had operated the uh, cable car at all. Well, actually, it was the uh, trolley, but uh, there are lots of famous people that we don't have, a, uh, we don't know about their San Francisco connection. For instance, Melvin Van Peebles actually drove the uh, cable car. Uh, Langston Hughes uh, was in San Francisco in 1934-1935, uh, wrote some of his uh, most important works. Uh, so many of our more famous African Americans have you know, significant ties to San Francisco. And so what the African American Freedom Trail does, we've identified 400 sites around the city that are of global and national significance. Uh, so for instance, um, the Mark Hopkins Hotel, where you can find the murals of Queen Calafia, who's the black woman warrior queen that California is named for. Now, I did not know that. You just mentioned that to me, and I'm sitting here mind totally blown. Why don't we know about these tidbits? Well, it's uh, one of the things that you mentioned about growing up here in California is that black history is not discussed as part of the narrative. There's also a bias towards the East Coast. I wrote the history of African Americans in the West for the Oxford Encyclopedia of African American History. And the entire rest of the encyclopedia was east of the Mississippi. I had one article that covered 23 states. Oh so, so the history of the West is ignored. The history of African Americans in the West is ignored but is qualitatively different because under Spanish and Mexican rule, 40% of the uh, settlers were of African descent. When Cortez uh, landed uh, in Mexico, uh, 300 of his 700 uh, soldiers were of African descent. So you always had about 40% black population in Spanish and early Mex Mexico. And when California was settled, that continued. So the majority of the settlers of Los Angeles were black, the majority of the settlers of San Jose uh, were black, 20% of the settlers of San, Jose, San Francisco were black. And so, 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 so you have a completely different racial uh, makeup. makeup you know, in the West as opposed to the East. So, and that's just something that we don't hear about much. Is this something that we, are these things that we learn as we go along the Freedom Trail? or, or Absolutely, these because uh, what we find is that it gives people a sense of belonging. So we call it psychosocial intervention because, you know, many African Americans complain that they don't see themselves in the city and they don't feel welcome here. But the first hotel, in the city was built by William Alexander Leidersdorf. There's a new nine foot statue of him at the corner of Leidersdorf and Pine, right in the middle of the financial district. First black bank in the country was at Montgomery and California. So we have a long history. We have five black organizations that were founded in 1852 that are still active today. Uh, Third Baptist Church, Bethel AME, First AME Zion, Hannibal Lodge number one, uh, Victoria Lodge number three. So the history is just so amazing that it actually has, you know, a, a major impact on young people. So, well, why is it so important for young people in particular to know about uh, these pieces of history that really aren't widely known? What does it do for young black youth to to hear that, for example, California is named after a black woman? Well, uh, I did a paper for the American Education Research Association called uh, Personal Authenticity and Perceived Chance of Success. So part of it is just being able to see somebody who looks like you. But the other part of it is to see them succeed because our whole aspirations are based on what we know. So, you know, there are young people who've never known anything except having a black president. So it won't be a big deal for them. That's true. But, uh, you know, unless you know that the inventor of the first video game was an African American, you won't want to go into technology or that uh, Roy Clay was the uh, founder of computer research and development at Hewlett Packard. So it goes into all types of industries uh, that 
have, you know, their origins here in the Bay Area. So there are so many areas where African Americans have made contributions that it gives kids a whole range of experiences. And we created a network called Reunion where we spend four hours a day of instructional video out because there's so much information that kids need to be immersed in it to overcome the impacts of what they uh, normally get a sense of. I have to imagine that that makes a difference within a kid to actually be able to look back and see themselves in a city in that way. Uh, you know, a lot of the conversation in San Francisco recently and I think, you know, over the past several years has really been about the lack of diversity in San Francisco, the problem of a lack of diversity of people of color being pushed out of neighborhoods by gentrification. Uh, we haven't heard a lot of answers. So what are some of the solutions around those sorts of problems? Well, the trail is designed to be part of the answer because it ties us into the major industry here, which is tourism. Uh, after there are about 1,600 African American visitors to the city on any given day. They spend about $172 million. None of it goes into our communities. So we can you know, direct some of that money into our communities and create jobs. But also, we can expand that total. Right now, it's only about 4% of the total uh, tourism spending. Mm -hmm. The other idea is that uh, what we lost when the shipyard was closed was industrial jobs. Absolutely. So we need to bring back industry. So we're doing a program on April 23rd called Red, Black, and Green, where we're focusing on African-American manufacturers of renewable energy, environmental products, and life sciences, which are the industries which are going into that area anyway. And so we need to make sure that African-Americans who have innovations, for instance, the inventor of the cardiac stent is Eric Williams, who grew up in Bayview Hunters Point. So there, there's, a, there's a history of innovation that comes out of the area. What we haven't done is to close the loop and build the companies. So if we build companies over there to create jobs, uh, so we encourage people who are interested in economic development to come to the Black Coalition on AIDS on April 23rd at 9 o'clock to learn more about these companies that you know are already beginning to create jobs in Southeast San Francisco. Amazing to think that something like the Freedom Trail could come around full circle in a way like that and inspire some of the real answers uh, to some of the economic problems here. That, that Absolutely. Are, you know? Absolutely. I mean, uh, the thing that makes San Francisco so important and so valuable is history. Everybody has history here except us. We have a longer history here than anybody else. So we should uh, embrace it and take advantage of it. It is really incredible to hear about all of the history that we don't know. What do you suggest people do if they're interested in this sort of history, want to find out more about it? We hit the Freedom Trail. How else do we get the word out about the history in San Francisco? Well, you can go to our website, CaliforniaBlackHistory.com. We've done a four-volume book called uh, Our Roots Run Deep that covers the entire state. And then part of the package is a book called Come to the Water sharing the rich black experience in San Francisco. So it's uh, 250 pages that just focuses on San Francisco. And it gives people the primary sources so that most of this information, is, you know, for instance, the first jazz club in the world is in San Francisco. So most right. of this information is 180 degrees different from what you've heard. So right. you not only got to learn it, you got to be prepared to defend the information. So we <laughs> give people not only, we not only tell you, but we show you the actual references and the sources. So you can really, you know, do the same thing that I did, you know, convince yourself that this is actually uh, authentic. And so uh, it's just enriching. Uh, you know, once you, once you find the information, you're going to be compelled to continue to learn more. Well, I'm already compelled to learn more. Just listening to this, it's so exciting. I need to get on that Freedom Trail myself and come to the water. That sounds like an excellent place to start. Thank you so much, John William Templeton, for coming to the show. Uh, for more information about the Freedom Trail, you can, of course, log on to CaliforniaBlackHistory.com, as John said. That's CaliforniaBlackHistory.com. That's all for us. Thanks for joining us. And please like us on Facebook and watch us every third Sunday right here on KBCW. Goodbye.